Good kill, good kill. Hey, good kill. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're here in the Super Hornet and we have we have a little base we need to hit there. They're setting up uh, an S-300, supposedly that's being delivered to them via some uh, Aleutian 76 transport aircraft. Uh, so as they unload the S-300, we absolutely don't want them to set that up. I'm sure you can imagine how much the S-300 is going to make our life harder. We need to get to that base and destroy that S-300 before it's even set up. And I'm sure they're going to have some short range IR and a lot of AAA and all that kind of stuff over there. Alright, we're going to be climbing here, uh, we have probably two flankers off the nose we need to deal with, uh, and they have AWACS, so they've got their data link. Uh, the flankers are going to be firing the R-77M, that's the modernized R-77, I believe that to be the newest version of the R-77 missile. Uh, we are firing the AIM-120D, the Delta variant, uh, which, you know, in my opinion, is probably similar to the R-77M in terms of capabilities. Uh, one may or may not be better. Uh, got this guy locked up here. Um, I do have him in a TWS track, um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that. I might switch the RWS, uh, range while scan, in a couple minutes here. Really, the, the reason for that is just range while scan is just a more reliable lock. Um, you know, TWIS has, or TWS I should say, has some uh, nicknames, uh, track while lose <laughs> is one of them. Uh, it's much easier to break a TWS track than it is a, a range while scan track. So, uh, and considering the formation of these guys, I don't think like the other ones staggered kind of in trail about five or six miles back. So I don't see any reason why I have to engage both of them. I can shoot the first guy and then I can offset to the right while the other guy tries to push me. I'll kill the first guy and then as the second guy tries to push me, I'll kill him as well. So there's no reason why we can't divide and conquer here, essentially. Um, let's put this guy into... Um, put him in a range well scan. Lock him up here. He's at 43 miles. And I'm below Mach 1. This is one of the big problems with the Hornet, especially with the uh, two 2,000 pound JDAMs I'm carrying. Uh, you know, we're very heavy. And it's going to be very hard for the Hornet to gain speed. And speed is very important to make your missiles dangerous, but uh, they're AIM 120Ds. And if I'm being honest, this guy looks like he's really pushing into the MAR here. He's not even trying to reduce altitude. Let's give him an AMRAM here, Fox 3, at 34 miles, and how high he is, I think he's going to die for sure. This is why you can't push into the MAR. Um, now, I am going to start reducing altitude very quickly, because if he fires an R-77M at me, I could be in trouble if I'm not reducing altitude here. There he is, Sukhoi 27, 28 miles. And we're just holding that lock as long as possible. One of them is locking me. Gonna start reducing altitude even faster. Uh, we are Mach 1.2 now on the descent. Got him right on the gimbal of the radar there. Lost lock. So we're gonna go cold. There's no reason to hang out here if we're not uh, holding a lock on something. We're going cold, making the assumption that a missile was fired at me. Always considering worst case scenario. Uh, we'll re 
commit here. My Amram should have reached him by now. He's still up. Oh, no, he's not. He got smoke trail. Okay, splash one. And there's the missile. Okay. Defending. I was wondering where it was. This is the danger with these modern Fox 3s, AMRAMs, R-77s, PL-15s, PL-12s. Uh, because they're Fox 3 active missiles, even though the launch aircraft has been destroyed, that missile is still completely active and able to kill you. Uh, I think we're good, so I'm going to start recommitting here, and we're going to climb because I believe that R-77 to be low. Uh, and so I'm hoping that we're going to climb over him because I have to get offensive on this flanker here at 33,000 feet. He's pushing me hard here. Uh, we're hopefully climbing over that missile. That was a little risky because if I if I didn't fly over it and it wasn't low on energy, I was going to fly right into it and it was going to hit me in the face. 29 miles, Fox 3 will defend here. A Hornet that has two JDAMs, two 2,000 pound JDAMs, uh, in my opinion, it's going to be very difficult for it to be competitive against the flanker in BVR, just because it's so heavy, the Hornet at that point. But the AMRAMs are really what, be careful not to hit the ground here, the AMRAMs are really what level the playing field in my opinion. Uh, the Deltas for sure. If I was just firing C5s, we'd be in very big trouble here. Okay, we'll try to recommit now. I'm working very hard to hold on to these JDAMs. Uh, and, you know, people have said, they're like, oh, uh, you would immediately jettison those. No, there's actually a scenario in Desert Storm where uh, it was a Legacy Hornet. Got jumped by a bunch of MiG-21s. And uh, he did not drop his bombs. And he was carrying four JDAMs, actually. But he didn't drop them. And uh, I believe he even got some air-to-air -air kills. So you don't have to drop them. But the situation, if it gets worse and worse, you're going to have to, yeah. So I got this guy at 27 miles now. 26 miles we're climbing. Seven, 8,000 feet. I'm very slow. Mach 0.56. Really depending on the AMRAM to do the heavy lifting for me here. 22 miles, still climbing. He's locking me as well. 21 miles now. 10,000 feet. Nineteen miles. This flanker's uh, a little bit harder to kill. He knows what the Mars are, it sounds like. Fox 3, 17 miles. The fact that this second flanker did not make the mistake of coming into the Mar and he's continually stayed out of it is what makes him so difficult to kill. Uh, that's his missile going pipple on me, so I'm off cold here. Got to be very careful with those R-77s. They got that, that second stage booster uh, where the missile near terminal guidance, it'll turn on that second booster. So you have to go cold for quite a significant uh, period of time against these R-77s. But I've stayed out of his Mar so far. Mar is minimum abort range. It's the uh, distance where you can still turn and run. If you're inside of the Mar, you can no longer turn and run. That missile will hit you. If you turn and run, you know, it'll still catch up to you and kill you. Uh, at that point, you have no option but to decoy the missile. Uh, if you're inside the Mar, you have to hit the notch, terrain mask, drop a bunch of chaff, that kind of thing, right? Um, but as long as you're outside of the Mar, you technically don't even need countermeasures. Like, I haven't dropped a single piece of chaff this whole time. Uh, and you saw getting inside the Mar super dangerous. You saw what happened to that first flanker. He died immediately. This one's not making that mistake. Uh, I got him in an offset. I'd like to get real close to him and shoot an offset AMRAM. That would be very nice. 
He got him at like 14 miles. He shot at me. I'm gonna have to defend here. miles we're off cold my nose is no longer pointing at him uh, things are about to get really risky here he's 12 miles I have to get him with this next shot here it looks like he's trying to push me he's trying to run me down turning away from that other missile same missile just scared of that second booster okay let's get this guy in a lock Right there, that missile is so annoying. Okay. He's right there. He's flying perpendicular to me as well. That's it, I'm offensive here. Let's get him locked. Come on, Hornet. There we go, 12 mile lock. He's turning into me. 10 miles. Fox 3. That should hit him. So that's a very tight shot, and now my only job is to go cold. And there's his missile. We're going super low. Super low altitude here. And that AMRAM should hit him. It was very close and I fired it kind of up. So it's going to come top down on him. And uh, also, as you can see, we're over pretty flat terrain. So I don't think he's going to be terrain masking that AMRAM. That R-77 is still chasing me. That thing is dangerous. It was super close. I think he fired it within 10 miles. Uh, so I'm just staying cold. And usually by now you could recommit, but again, you can't do that with the R-77. And again, that's obviously because of that second stage booster. Very dangerous. It's still back there. <laughs> I've never had to run from a missile for so long. We'll do some twists and turns here and maybe we can bleed some of its energy. This is not really a great tactic because it bleeds your energy more than the missile. Alright. I think I think we're actually good. <sighs> okay. I feel like I ran from that thing for like two hours. Uh, okay, we're gonna... let's go drop these JDAMs now. I think we're good. Alright, so no long-range SAMs here, because obviously the S300 has not been set up yet. Although, I don't want to get too close down there, because I think they also have short-range IR. Uh, you know, the Holoton Guskas, SA-13s, all that kind of stuff. So I don't want to get too close there. Uh, but look at that, there they are. There's the Aleutian 76s. And there's a bunch of S300. Looks like the Tells. The Tells are the launchers. My bad, hold on. I screwed it up. Just a second, let me fix it. There we go. Yeah, we got a bunch of Tells. I see radars. I see command vehicles, so that's perfect. I'm not going to aim for the planes, of course. We're aiming for the S-300 assets. Okay, let's go ahead and turn in. I'm going to come in fast here. We don't want to be too slow because there's going to be AAA, and if there's an IR SAM, uh, we're also going to have to pre-flare. Uh, in case they do shoot, they do manage to get a lock. 
Uh, okay, I got this spot designated here. And pickle. So one away, we'll put the next one right here. And pickle. Okay, that's two away. Let's break off here and get out of here. Alright, just watching the airfield here, watching for uh, missile launches, AAA, we are being locked. Uh, I'm dropping some flares, just precautionary here. Oh, we got a missile launch, missile launch, dropping flares. Very nice missile missed. Bunch of Triple E still coming in. Bombs have impacted. There we go. Good hits. Bad day to be an S-300 operator. But we're taking a lot of AAA here. A lot of AAA from that airfield there. Pull up a little bit. Alright, I'm happy with that. Mission complete. Uh, let's go ahead and get out of here. <laughs>